In the framework of RED, or uh, um, reduction of greenhouse uh, gases emissions from um, deforestation and degradation, MRV is uh, the system for uh, monitoring, reporting and verifying the effectiveness in um, greenhouse gases emission reduction. Then the reference emission levels define a benchmark scenario of greenhouse gases emissions that would happen in, uh, in the absence of a, a red uh, project or a red scheme. Now, um, emission levels are calculated as a combination of what uh, we call activities data and uh, emission factors. So uh, the activity data is, uh, describes the types of uh, land use changes and is uh, expressed uh, as a surface unit. And this information is uh, generally derived from uh, satellite imagery. And the emission factors provide an estimate of uh, greenhouse gases emissions for a given activities data. So for instance, if we know that an area is a threat of deforestation, uh, we can assign to this area an emission factor and calculate the greenhouse gases emissions. Then if uh, this area <coughs> isn't deforested, we can calculate the uh, avoided greenhouse gases emissions. But the emissions that would happen in the absence of any mitigation scheme. It's a reference, it's a business as usual scenario. So C4 is doing research uh, on uh, MRV and on uh, emission levels, uh, both on activities data and on emission factors. And in Indonesia, um, uh, most of our research focuses on peatlands. So there are three reasons. Uh, the first one is that uh, uh, tropical peatlands are among the, the largest uh, uh, carbon pools on Earth. So uh, when uh, these uh, ecosystems are converted, uh, huge amounts of carbon are released into the atmosphere. Uh, the second reason is that uh, Indonesia is one of the countries in the tropics uh, holding uh, the largest area of peatlands. And Indonesia is also a country where 80% of national greenhouse gases emissions are from land use change with 50% of this 80% coming from fires and land use change uh, in uh, tropical pit swamp forests. And finally, uh, there are, there are uh, significant uh, gaps in, um, in uh, knowledge and uh, in the methods for quantifying carbon losses from land use change in, in, in these ecosystems. Um, so when pit swamp forests are converted, we estimate that about 60 to 80 percent of the emissions come from the pit. Um, therefore, we have uh, oriented our research in, um, uh, in providing uh, uh, details on the, and accurate data on these emissions from the pit. Um, for this, we use a, a general method which is proposed by the IPCC which is called the gain-loss approach or input-output approach. So this method uh, consists in, um, in measuring all the fluxes coming into the pit and all the fluxes going out of the pit and in calculating the balance. And so to, to make it uh, uh, simplistic, we could compare this pit carbon stock to a bank account and uh, calculate how much money is uh, saved or lost uh, during the year by making the balance of the transfers in and out of uh, the account. Now if we, if we go back to the pit, uh, so the main carbon inputs to the pit are from litter fall and root mortality and uh, carbon goes out of the pit uh, through uh, pit decomposition, fires, uh, methane emissions and uh, soluble and physical removals. In this uh, specific project, um, so the three PhD students are uh, focusing their research on one or two of these fluxes uh, across uh, one of the most common land use change type that we find here in Indonesia, which is pit swamp forest conversion to oil palm plantation. So Sebastian Persch is, uh, is quantifying carbon inputs uh, through root mortality. 
Louis Pierre Como is uh, assessing how much carbon is entering through litterfall and how much carbon is lost through peat decomposition. And Jody Hartil is measuring the fluxes of methane and nitrous oxide and also the, the losses through uh, soluble and physical removal. In their natural state, these ecosystems are waterlogged. So you don't have, uh, you have a very low decomposi decomposition rate of the organic matter. So it accumulates and, 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 and that's how the, the, the peat builds over uh, millennia. And once you drain, uh, you reverse the situation and the, the carbon that has been accumulated is, uh, start, starts decomposing and uh, emitted as CO2 or uh, methane. So, Indonesia is one of the greatest emitters of greenhouse gases in the world. And uh, as I said, uh, a great part of these emissions are from, uh, from the pit. So, uh, climate change mitigation schemes in Indonesia should therefore focus on uh, protecting these uh, pit swamp forests. However, uh, the implementation of, uh, of such schemes uh, depends on, on the supply of reliable uh, uh, greenhouse gases estimates. Especially for a scheme like RED, which aims at protecting uh, forests, it's very important. And uh, so now these, these estimates of uh, reference emission levels and uh, the, the, our potential estimates of uh, avoided greenhouse gases emissions are not appropriate. So we really need, I mean, it's, it's urgent now and uh, it's very important to provide better estimates of, this, uh, of these fluxes. So at C4, we are now four scientists uh, involved in the, in the writing of a new chapter for the IPCC uh, National Greenhouse Gases Inventories. Uh, so this chapter is specific for wetlands. In the different chapters, there was a section specific for peat soils, but actually these uh, ecosystems are so specific that they require um, a chapter for, uh, for themselves. I mean, not only peat, but also you have uh, other uh, rich uh, soils, carbon-rich soils like mangrove soils. We were able to provide uh, uh, emission factors for peat swamp forest conversion to both uh, old palm and acacia plantations. Um, and now with the, with the research that is going on on the ground in, in bareback, but we are also starting uh, some new uh, um, research in, um, in uh, Tajung Puting in Kalimantan, we will, we will be able to, to refine these estimates for the conversion to old palm plantation. And then um, we, we have also recently released um, an emission factor for uh, the emissions of nitrous oxide following nitrogen application in all palm uh, plantations on peat. So, yeah, usually when we monitor the, the, the greenhouse gases uh, from an ecosystem, we monitor uh, carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. Um, and so methane and nitrous oxide are very important because their global warming potential or their capacity in heating the atmosphere is uh, respect respectively uh, 25 and 300 times more powerful than CO2. So that's on one hand. On the other hand, their con concentrations in, in the atmosphere is, mu is much lower. But um, in, um, in cases of, uh, of uh, agricultural systems where uh, we have uh, high nitrogen inputs, we can, have, uh, we can have high emissions of nitrous oxide. So we need to make sure that these are not uh, uh, too high. There are ways to reduce them by reducing the, the fertilization without reducing the, uh, the, the productivity of the systems, actually.
We, we are investing, investigating this now uh, in all palm plantations uh, on peat because um, when, the, when the land has been uh, uh, recently cleared, opened, um, the, the soil is very poor in nitrogen. So actually the, the fertilization rate is quite high for uh, allowing the, the palms to develop well. And so during these uh, three, four years, um, uh, we may have significant emissions of nitrous oxide. After that, uh, they can reduce the, the nitrogen application because uh, the peat, uh, the nitrogen which is in the peat is, is becoming more available for the plant. So they can reduce the, the application. But still there is, uh, I mean, there, there is fertilization and there are uh, emissions of nitrous oxide. In terms of peatlands, I think, uh, especially after land use change, the big, uh, the big story is about CO2, because um, the, the, the soil is completely changing of uh, state uh, from a waterlogged condition to a drain condition, and then uh, this, uh, this speeds up the decomposition uh, as, as CO2. It's challenging to work in, this, uh, in these virgin ecosystems, uh, which are usually uh, located in remote areas. So it's, it's difficult to access through the rivers, through the swamp. And uh, we also have to face the local biodiversity with the tigers, uh, the snakes, the orangutans <laughs> and, uh, and the monkeys. But it's also challenging because there, there is a lot uh, to learn about, a lot to discover, and uh, we're, we are really looking forward to verify our research hypothesis.